The mid-20th century witnessed the birth of a remarkable era in transportation, the golden age of air travel. This period spanning roughly from the 1950s to the 1970s marked a transformative time in the way people perceived and experienced travel. As the aviation industry reached new heights, a sense of glamour, adventure, and excitement enveloped air travel, forever altering the way individuals traversed the globe. The Rolex GMT Master II was born out of a collaboration with Pan American Airways, also known as Pan Am, the leading airline of the golden age of air travel. In 1954, Rolex introduced the GMT Master, designed specifically for pilots to keep track of multiple time zones when navigating across continents. The 50s and 60s marked an era of flying that was more than just a mode of transportation. It was an experience, a glamorous adventure. Pilots and cabin crews were seen as modern day explorers and the GMT Master became their trusted companion. The distinctive red and blue bezel of the GMT Master II, often referred to as the Pepsi bezel, became synonymous with the jet setting lifestyle. This innovative feature allowed pilots to distinguish between day and night hours in a second time zone. Today, the GMT Master II remains a timeless classic, a bridge between the golden age of air travel and the present. Modern air travel emphasizes the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle of, of our modern lifestyles is comparably cheaper to the golden age of air travel. It is a more of a no-frills approach, trying to maximize profit and maximizing the amount of people while sacrificing comfort and luxury, at the same time losing a little bit of the spirit of adventure. In 2018, Tuda released the Black Bay GMT, which allowed many people out there to get a taste of what it's like to own a Rolex GMT Master II with the Pepsi bezel. Tudor fans out there and potential watch buyers were extremely happy about this new product. With the release of the Tudor Black Bay GMT in 2018, Tudor provided a product that provided all the same functions as the Rolex GMT Master II, along with the iconic Pepsi bezel with, with its blue and red bezel denoting, you know, day from night. The Tudor Black Bay GMT is a true traveler's watch. Lives up to the GMT Master II, but opening the doors for many new potential owners. So in this video, I want to talk about my uh, Tudor GMT watch. I've owned it for, uh, I guess, since October, so about three months or so. So I can, I feel like I can give you my full opinion on the watch. You know, I, I think for this watch, I feel like that Rolex and Tudor sort of threw us a bone. For people who actually, if they, even if they wanted to buy a brand new Rolex Pepsi at retail, which is over $10,000 right now, uh, at an AD, they would not be able to because they the AD will simply not sell it to them. You don't have the spend history. I don't know. You're not you're you're not as important as some other clients, I guess. You know, obviously most people uh, are not going to get one of these watches ever. To buy it on the secondary market, we're talking it's like a twenty thousand dollar watch, which is insane. I don't think even if I had the money, I don't think I'd ever, I'd ever spend that much money on a watch. I don't think I could do it. I think I've mentioned this in like a previous video. I sort of have a, like an upper limit where I feel comfortable uh, spending. Probably what I spend on my Omega Seamaster is probably the upper limit of what I'm comfortable spending on a watch. That kind of gives you an idea of where I'm where I'm comfortable. I like to be under that most of the time, and most of the watches that I purchased in the past have been way under that, including this one, my Tudor GMT. Rolex and Tudor threw us a bone because most of us aren't going to get a Rolex Pepsi. Most of us maybe um, just don't have the, the money to buy it at retail or we simply cannot buy it at retail. I am very thankful that Tudor decided to make this watch because I was able to acquire this one for under $3,000. Uh, pre-owned and but works perfectly it's in really good condition and I'm perfectly happy with this watch I've handled the Batgirl and I've, I've you know I've, I've obviously owned this GMT and it does it does the same thing it's hard for me to justify buying a Pepsi even if I could buy it at retail which I probably would if given the chance but but that's not gonna happen it's we're talking about two and a half times the price even if you bought it at retail and, and if you bought it in the secondary market it's way more but you know I want to go I want to dive into a little bit about the Rolex GMT uh, as far as you know, pricing is concerned because when it was first released in 1954, I didn't find the price for that one, the original price, but I found the 1957 variant uh, was $240 in 1957 for the Rolex GMT Master. I put that into an inflation calculator and it spat out to $2,600, which is within $300 of what I paid for this, about $2,900. That kind of gives you an idea of where Rolex is as a brand versus, you know, where it went back then versus where it is now completely different and you know the the argument that Tudor is the new Rolex is is a very valid argument in my opinion because 
I think when Rolex started, it wasn't it wasn't an exclusive club where you had to be a special uh, client or person to or have an enormous spend history to buy one of these watches. They were just available for people to buy and and to enjoy and to wear. They've turned they've kind of turned into these like status symbols, right? When you're spending this much on an object that you can wear and you potentially get robbed for, you know, it kind of it probably gives a lot of people hesitation to wear one of these things out in public because you could you you could get mugged for this thing and you're out your watch. You could have been on the waiting list for five years for this Rolex, Rolex Pepsi, maybe even longer, and you finally got it and then, you know, a month later you get mugged for it and it's gone. And if you don't if it's not insured, you're screwed. You're out the entire ten ten plus thousand dollars. Even worse if you paid like in the secondary market, which is they're currently going for about twenty thousand dollars, which is insane. I guess my point of this video is uh, just buy the tutor. Some of us aren't meant, you know, we're just not going to ever have the Rolex, and that's, and I'm fine with that. And I'm very happy that Tudor actually made this watch, which is a fantastic watch, by the way. We'll go into the other room, and I'll show it to you a little closer, a little better. Obviously, this watch has been out for a while, so I'm not going to, I think it's since 2018 or 2019, I don't remember. But uh, it's been out quite a while, so I'm not going to go into great detail. I just wanted to talk about my ownership experience, uh, my thoughts about the Rolex versus the Tudor, which is the, it's, it's, it's a very clear, clear comparison. You know, they're, you know, Tudor's the sister company of Rolex. Tudor knew what they were doing when they put this out. They knew that people would flock to this thing. Such an iconic looking watch with the, the iconic red and blue bezel. Although with the aluminum insert versus the serochrome cer insert that the uh, Rolexes have, uh, I think it's a simply fantastic watch. Does the, it's a Traveler's GMT, does everything you wanted. I actually took it on a trip recently and I, you know, um, my, my, my only trip last year where I actually flew somewhere. I took it and I kind of, uh, I was kind of like trying to get this watch before my trip and uh, I really really enjoyed wearing it in its native environment you could say like being on being in the air being on you know for air travel for it's a traveler's watch right So I'm not gonna ramble like crazy about this watch. It's been out for about six years now. Uh, I just want to kind of talk about the basics how to use it and kind of demonstrate how and kind of give you my overall thoughts of it. So the dial is a nice matte black. The dial is very nice. Obviously you have the snowflake hands, a generous amount of loom on the dial, which is great. Uh, the bezel is, I think it, it's a like, it's a 48 click bezel, which I don't, I don't quite understand what the benefit would be. I guess some, some areas have like a half time zone. Uh, you know, I don't know. like most, you know, like the Rolex GMT Master has a 24, Click bezel. This has twice as many clicks. Uh, don't know how beneficial that would be. Far so as far as the bezel, it's a, you know it's the most it's not the most refined experience, but it's it's nice that it clicks at all. So it's way better than the likes of a uh, like a Seiko the Seiko Five GMT, let's say, which is just friction based. This is this has defined clicks, so you can place it you know in very defined pl uh, places along the bezel. Obviously, you have the Pepsi color scheme, which is uh, classic and iconic which, you know, that, I don't need to talk about that very much. The uh, the faux rivets, uh, I didn't think it, you know, honestly, I never thought that they would bother me very much, as you can see that it's a very nice bracelet. Um, and the, honestly, I, the rivets don't bother me at all. I could care less, it, they look fine. I don't ever, when you're, when you're wearing the watch, you're not looking at the rivets, you're looking at the, you know, the dial, or you're looking at the, uh, the front of the of the bracelet. You're not really like focusing on the rivets that much. So I don't. I wouldn't call that a deal breaker. Clasp is a is a high quality one with a cup with a you know with some micro adjustability. You got three levels of micro adjustability there, and uh, you know, and you got a flip, flip lock there as well for double for a little extra security. And as you can see, the the uh, the flip mechanism here, the class, does you know, uh, turns into the Tudor shield, which is a nice touch. The height of the case, you know, I, I believe this thing is about. I'm I'm not gonna take measurements or anything, but I think it's about 14 millimeters or so. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna go into measurements or anything. I'm gonna just tell you what I, how it wears. Uh, since this case is a 41 millimeter, I think the height is not a, much of an issue because it's like spreading the height over a larger case. Um, I think that does help with the height uh, aspect, which is, you know, it's not the, sh it's not the, I think it's about 14 millimeters or so, and it honestly doesn't feel that bad. It doesn't, 
it, it doesn't feel like a hockey like you're wearing a hockey puck on your wrist it actually feels quite nice and the lugs and the uh, the bracelet hangs quite low on the lugs which is nice so it helps it helps it uh, fit nicely on the on wrist so it's actually a nice wearing experience I you know I, I wouldn't recommend that if you have like a this probably works best if you have a six and a half inch wrist or bigger maybe pushing it a six and a quarter or, or six if not, I would look maybe more towards a slightly smaller watch. Uh, maybe I think people would go nuts if you know Tudor actually made a, a 39 millimeter GMT watch, other than the, uh, the the Black Bay Pro. You know, something that looked more like this at 39 millimeters, I think, would sell like hotcakes. But uh, they would need to get the case uh, uh, height down a little bit more for that, I believe. Yeah, but overall, these, those are my thoughts. I love this watch. It uh, gets a lot of attention, and uh, I really, really enjoy it a lot. I forgot to mention, you got the uh, Tudor Rose there on the on the crown there, which a lot of Black Bays have that uh, little touch there, which is kind of nice. Nice little uh, harkens back to uh, when Tudor actually used uh, the, ro the rose as their logo. But you got the shield and, and the rose on the crown, which is kind of nice. So I was just going to quickly show you how to use the watch? Uh, very basic, on a very basic level. To show you the jump hour, you're gonna unscrew the crown, pull it out until you get one click. As you can see, the the seconds hand didn't stop moving. Let's say I'm going to Europe, I can go forward like three hours or so, and then the the local time, the twenty the twenty four hour hand stays at the at the local time. It lets you keep track of where you are and where you came from. So now let's say, oh, okay, I'm back. I just arrived back home, just go back and that's it, you're, you're back home and then the hour, you can jump the hour back and let's say you can even go back in time, like wind, wind back the date, as you can see it went back to the 6th, or I can go right back. There you go. Um, it's that simple, uh, you can also play with the, the uh, bezel to track another time zone, let's say you want to you can track uh, you can track a third time zone with that. I, I don't use the the bezel to t track another time zone because I feel like I have to do too many some mental gymnastics to to kind of figure out the time. I, I just like using the the uh, the twenty four hour hand to keep my local time and just jump the hour if I need to track another time zone. But you know that that's about it. Yeah, but that's it. It's very simple to use, and uh, this watch. Uh, does everything that the uh, that the more expensive Rolex does. Those are my thoughts about the watch. I think uh, I think it's great. You know, if if you're if you're dying to get a Rolex GMT, I, you know, please do not do not spend twenty thousand dollars on a on a GMT Master Two. Don't even spend sixteen grand on a Batgirl or a Batman, even though they, they are like they are cheaper than the Pepsi's. I wouldn't recommend that, man. That, there's so much more you can do with your money than, than that. If you can't get it at retail, I would I would strongly consider getting the uh, the Tudor because you know it it when it comes down to it, it does the same thing, man. You know um, there are other Rolexes you can buy that are closer to retail right now. The the Explorer Two you can get for about retail, uh, which is a fantastic GMT watch and does the exact same thing as the GMT the, as the Pepsi. It just doesn't have the iconic you know, uh, vessel that the Pepsi has, or the Batgirl for that matter, or you can't get it on Jubilee, it's more of a sports watch, and it's, I guess, th there are clear differences, the Explorer 2 is a bigger watch, so uh, I guess the GMT Master 2 wears better, uh, it just be works better for more wrists, I guess you could say. The Tudor GMT is a, is a 41, so it's sort of a, an in-between watch. It does wear big, but I think it wears nicely on my 7 and a quarter inch wrist. And uh, I couldn't be happier. But anyway, if you have any questions about this watch, and if you have any opinions about Rolex and you know Tudor, just throw them in the comments. It's good. It's good for engagement, and I really like uh, hearing from you guys. It really helps the channel a lot if you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.